Let us pray. Almighty God, look with mercy on this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and to be given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reading from Isaiah chapter 52, verse 13, to chapter 53, verse 12. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see, and that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of the dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life like an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Here 
the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. second reading is from Corinthians 1, 18 to 31. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jew foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. 
God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Jesus Christ, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Stand sing when his time was over. No, that's a mistake. So it's Alice. It's you two. We were just looking for the other two readers. Oh, that's Bev and I. We'll be up here. Okay. 
The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John, chapter 18, verse 1, to chapter 19, verse 42. Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the, the Kindron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with, the, with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward. For whom are you looking? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked, For whom are you looking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he. If you're looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in the sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that my father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest, but Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing round it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogues and in the temple where the people come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? <clears throat> then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them. What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The people replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfil Jesus, what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? Do you ask on your own, 
Or did others tell you about me? I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the people. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. So you are a king. You say that I am a king. For this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the crowd again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, king of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again. Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again. Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and power to crucify you? You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. Here is your king. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write, The King of the Jews, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who will get it. This was to fulfil what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus, were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. 
When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A full jar, a jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Amarathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed the body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. First station. Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. 
because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Pilate said to the crowd, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then they handed him over to be crucified. Reflection 1. We grow towards what we want. So the corn breaks earth and stone to seed for the sun. Fields of lavender flow, moving as women do, loose as a gown. I reach for somewhere safe to search back through the layers of a dream, digging and sifting to another time, an early time, when men and women were tried out by gods. First took fire and iron, shaped the world to their schemes. Back to that imagined first day, a place where a man might study his hands, know at a glance they are clean. That it should come to this, a man, a mob, a judgment, death of freedom, the water at least is cool, a bowl wide enough to scrub my fingers, a pool in which I might drown. station. Jesus receives the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. Who teaches a tree its seasons? to wait in its bones in winter, to bleed, weep, and bud. Tell the story in rings and girth, the seed, the store of all things. Who can teach him now? Not for him the feel of the plow cutting furrows into the palms of his hands, the taste of snow on a thirsty tongue, how his face too mighty finally sag with all the stories he's ever told. He is the bee stumbling with its pollen, the swallow dancing in the flower's net. He is the branch breaking in the storm. He is the way ahead. station, Jesus falls for the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by, by your, your holy cross, cross you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. He was pierced for our sins, crushed for our iniquity. He bore the punishment that makes us whole. By his wounds we were healed. A child's tumble, a cut knee, a pratfall, the body's original, I say, I say, I say. Surely that's all. And if it were more, the sow learns her loveliness nuzzling roots in the damp, the thrush in the first note of the song. How often we don't know what we've become until we start. 
His face is getting lost, like wood blurred from polish and use. His fingers curled dried leaves. The panic as he pushes at the brittle earth. How he might scatter easily as dust. station. Jesus meets his blessed mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your, your holy cross you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. In Jerusalem you shall find your comfort. It's a crowd in her head who kicks her now, words awkward as elbows, Man, boy, rabbi, brother, son, all the faces he ever wore. Angry, fearsome, fearful, loving, mad. Back to his childhood and the shock of weight when she took him in her arms. Back to that first night and her groan when the sack after, of afterbirth escaped her warmth. Back before it all began. Watching this day from that night, wanting to take water and bathe him, as she did then, washing away the muck and blood, the stuff of her that clung to his skin, until he was as clear as a stream, tying off that stem on which he'd flowered, each other free at last. She would take him back, of course, if it would do any good, let her belly swell, return him to the sea and salt and murky dreams, but he would not go. He is a child of earth now, cut and bruised, holding the weight of a world as if it were a beam. Fifth station, Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, and after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. All I wanted was to lift you up and walk away. But you grew small, curled down into my hand, nestling like a mouse preparing for winter. How easy it would have been to finish it there, to crush you, to save everyone the trouble, or to run, carry you off, find somewhere dark to sleep, to heal as we dreamed, but no, we walked as they commanded us, you growing tall again, the look on your face as we reached the hill, furious as if to say, why didn't you take your chance? Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. 
We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. She has done a good thing for me. Wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Let me do for you what they do for the dead now, while you still breathe. Your face, simple as a lamb's pleading. Let me wash you into shape, prepare you to be seen. Sew back the seams of broken skin, touch you with linen and balm, or wrap you tight in cotton and herbs, hide you from your task, steal you where you can't be found. Later, when you are dead, we shall cut the threads, open the cloth with the delicacy of silk, lifting off that other you, the one you carry now, leaving you clean, your new self. Seventh station. Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by, by your holy cross, cross you, you have redeemed, redeemed the world. Therefore, he had to become like this, brothers, in every way, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest before God to expiate the sins of people. Because he himself was tested. Through what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. Perhaps he is already done, his hands and limbs hardening, discovering the thick, cool stiffness of the dead, the pulsing code unravelling, soon to spoil in the pit where they'll throw him, beating off the dogs with sticks, and the rush back home to grey bread barks echoing in the night. And if we were kind, we'd bring marvellous girls to bathe his wounds, garlands and flowers to aid his sleep. We'd offer him that at least, then leave him to his dreams. But that is for later, we say, like a secret deployed when it aids us best. We know the time for angels, for soothing balms, a bed on which to rest. And if we leave him, it is because we know he still has far to go, has centuries yet to meet us. It is his task to walk them alone. Station, women of Jerusalem, we adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed, redeemed the world. <clears throat> A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Worry instead for yourselves and for your children, for indeed the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. It was not how you think. Crowds <coughs> pressing, <coughs> dust rising, salt on tongue and face. More like we had forgotten how to dance. We who had moved and twirled to his lead, toe to toe, the scent of bread and oil on his hands, we who had made new things, had worked warm leaven through broken grain, 
Is this how it will be? Our eyes open or closed or held away like people at the edge of a sea, seeing ourselves cast back, distorted and wavering, ripples in the dawn. Ninth station, Jesus falls a third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by your holy cross, cross you have redeemed, redeemed the world. Three times I begged the Lord about this weakness, that it might leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. If he were a lamb, half dead, half born, head hanging dumbly from the birth canal, we'd give him this at least, quick hands, snap spine, the mother too, her slick wool washed, fingers brushed along the nape of her neck. But we are unsure what is best. The body, the only way to the soul, we say. Perhaps this is his plan to map his own secret history of what it takes to cure a world. So we busy ourselves, hide like children, frightened by shadows, a familiar face in the night. Tenth station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by, by your, your holy cross, cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. I can count all the bones. They stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments among them. For my clothing they cast lots. So many things it could never be. A robe for a prince, fruit of a thousand moths, spun from months, delicate as a conscience, or a groan, or a gown for prayer, dark with sweat. O oh God of gods, save us from locusts and the blood. It is just a story of him, stained with talk of lost sons, a dusty road, the net which threw forth a lifetime's tale. It is his walking and sleeping, the breaking of bread, the thread which stitched together a kingdom, and it is all he has left to keep him safe. station. Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right and the other on his left.
Later, we talked of orchards of blossom and bud, a human vine trained by iron, fruit for the dark. But then I thought only of song, of melodies fragile as ribs, of how a monster might hammer music from a stockpile of bones. This instrument on a hill whistled harmonies we could not stand, as if the dead had been raised and sang half-remembered psalms. We left quickly, as mourners do, hungry for home and warmth, dust blackening in the rain, notes beating on the roofs, the world's heart untuned, a cold percussion, drowned lives. station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Wishing he could nestle now in the crook of his mother's arm, the firstborn, the wonder, light as bread, the pearl unexpectedly found, or further back, a sea being, a smoke dye, a creature of mirrors, darting in shadows till the trap is sprung, the net raised high, cast on a beach to slap and dance, the business quickly done, but he has become the last of his tribe, deaf to the secrets of words only he knows. Gabbling alone, mouth open, no song. A time Station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your... Too late. The thirteenth station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your, your holy, holy cross, cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. 
In order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, the Jewish leaders asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken away. If you were asleep, it would be easy to say the things you've never known. How old age grows round the throat like a vine, how it tightens every day. You tell me otherwise, about ghosts that rise in the desert and the way grain breaks open and dies, begins again in the ground. How we are all born and grow into the dark but you have always been sure of the shape of the land, touched her curves as a boy holds a girl, her secrets given up at the crop of your hands, snapping open the eyes of the blind with spit and soil, kicking crowds up behind you. If I knew the trick, I'd crumble earth, rub it in, and you blinking awake, I'd stare you down, tell you the news, I told you so. How you'd smile and look away, walking off as if there was somewhere still left to find. The 14th station. Jesus is buried. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by, by your, your holy cross, cross you, you have redeemed, redeemed the world. world. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had known had hewn from the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. Look at us. Three figures posed like actors figuring out how to play grief. One kneeling by the corpse, face pushed down. Another reaching out, offering a mother's hand. The man standing apart, arm pressed across his chest as if to keep his heart in. But it is too soon for us to know how to act, too soon to carry the dead within us, to walk away, seal the stone. We are just learning to set him down, finding out what is safe, like parents with a newborn. Can we begin again? We who have watched our faces gather into folds, become rooted fields, who have scattered grains and not seen them rise. We might have been here for years, growing slowly into the dark, waiting for this one hour of light. We might have been here for all time.
stand to sing My Song is Love Unknown. in whose body was named all the violence of the world and whose memory is contained our pr profoundest grief we lay open to you the violence done to us in time before memory the unremembered wounds that have misshaped our lives 
the injuries we cannot forget and not forgiven. The remembrance of them is grievous to us. The burden of them is intolerable. We lay open to you the violence done in our name in time before memory, the unremembered wounds we have inflicted, the injuries we cannot forget and for which we have not been forgiven. The remembrance of them is grievous to us. The burden of them is intolerable. We lay open to you those who have pursued a violent knowledge the world cannot forget, those caught up in violence they have refused to name, those who have enacted violence which they have not repented. The remembrance of them is grievous to us. The burden of them is intolerable. We lay open to you the victims of violence whose only memory is our anger, those whose suffering was sustained on our behalf, those whose continued oppression provides the ground we stand on. The remembrance of them is grievous to us. The burden of them is intolerable. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ says to all who turn to God. Come to me, all you who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us pray for the coming kingdom in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. At the beginning of the service, you were all given a strip of cloth. If any has missed out, we've got spare here. Um, this is the, the time where we remember the, the enslaving of Jesus and we play our part, our gift of love. So it's going to be <laughs> the, the music that we will be listening to during this is a version of the reproaches. The reproaches were originally chanted in Latin, and this is an English version. Um, uh, and there's within the service booklet you have the text of the reproaches and also some details about those who are singing. So while that's going on, um, we then simply. Uh, out of our love for Christ, lay strips of cloth over him and we prepare him for burial. It will work. Okay. Stay there. Hold that thought.
But you gave me gall and vinegar to do. you have raised me high on a cross. Now sing, oh no you don't, yes, uh, Morning Glory Starlit Sky, which will be the, uh, the offertory hymn uh, with the collection going to the Anglican Border Mission uh, offering to Jerusalem. Uh, if you haven't made it already, the, during the hymn, the bowl is in the middle of the aisle and you can access it that way.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, the story of your suffering is written on our hearts, and the salvation of the world is in your outstretched hands. Keep your victory always before our eyes, your praise on our lips, your peace in our hearts. Amen. Amen.